Jiffy's Pithies and obviously the Silders, I'm back with part 2 of my Allie tutorial series. I had so much hate on part 1 for having a bad microphone, so I've gone out, I've bought a new microphone, let me know in the comments how this sounds. Without further ado, let's get into part 2. Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm so sorry for putting you through that intro. I feel like I've probably got like 200 dislikes off the bat. Or maybe you'll just close the video like, nope, I'm out. But I had so many dislikes and comments on the last video regarding the sound quality. And I have no idea what caused it. None of my other videos are like that. But hopefully this video is going to be a lot better. What we're doing today is we're going to be doing the Allier Part 2. This was a very popular video, part one. It's sitting at 140,000 views, which is massive for my channel. Loads of likes. So I thought I'd bring back part two, which clarifies how to make the Ali A logo, but for any letter at all. Because the last one was just me remaking Ali A's. This one is really narrowing down on how you can make it for yourself. That was part, I was going to be doing part two way back in the day. Sorry it's taken so long. But I hope this video helps. I'm going to be slowing it down a little bit, trying to teach the people that are maybe a bit more new to Photoshop how it's done. You know, talk about each tool that I'm using, how to set up the background, how to do everything basically. Um, so I hope that doesn't bore you if you are a bit more advanced. It should still be a good video. Uh, anyway, let's get into it. Right, so the first thing I want to mention is I made a question on some social medias regarding like what, who wanted me to make a logo for them, what letter they wanted it to be and what colour. If you guys follow me on my social medias, the links are in the description uh, and on screen at the moment, then you'll have a really big chance of getting featured and winning things like this because I, I have so few people interact that when I post something, the chances of you popping up are very high. But we had Jay Famous who wanted a J in purple and we had Carlo who wanted a C and you wanted it green. So the first thing that I did is I started to get inspiration. Before I started sketching, I went onto Google and I just typed in alphabet font and I started looking at all these letters. I just clicked on loads of random images and just had a, got a feel for each letter. So I was like, right, a J. It needs to be quite curly. It needs to be quite exaggerated because you don't want a boring logo, especially in the Allier style. He's taken it. He's made it quite bold. Now, a lot of these, you'll probably, you'll probably be thinking like, how can I apply this? They're curvy letters. I need sharp, strong objects. But you need to get a feel for the direction and the shape of your letter first. And then you could use da font. So something cool you can do on da font is if I go to like comic, for example, you can type your text up here. So I could put a J in, a uh, lowercase and an uppercase, and then I could press submit, and then you get all your fonts, and they're already written out for you, like in the letter. So you can just fly down this page for ages. There's loads of fonts on this website. And then when you find one that you like, you could pull it into Photoshop. Um, and then I just started drawing. So I started, here you go, I started sketching the letters in the style. And then when I say in the style, it's usually quite bold. So little triangles, um, rectangles. There's not really curves. Or in the Allier one, there isn't anyway. I guess you could incorporate it. Maybe if you've got an S, you might need to. Because doing an S with just like that is going to look a bit... You know, you're going to run out of ideas. Um, but for the most part, you're probably going to want to make it quite bold and sharp. And as, like, uncurvy as possible. So there are curves, like where it gets cut off there. Um, and I've done a small bit of a curve there. So you can incorporate that into your letter. And then the C up here... Did some more sketches. This is the one that I like the most out of the C's. I might make some kind of cut through. Like I've done with the J. And like both of them they're not finalised. Like this bit how it comes over the um, the outline. Whereas this bit it goes under. Bits like that I'm going to play around with. But these are just the rough ideas. The rough sketches. And then something else that I want to do. Is I want to talk about how the background was made. Because loads of you guys were commenting. It's such a simple background. But I figured if it's something that you guys quite like the look of. Then I'll break down exactly how to do that. And how to set up your canvas. So let's do that bit now. So we're going to do file. New. Now I start off with my resolution. So 1920 by 1080. That's a good size. It fits YouTube videos. It's um sort of like a default monitor resolution, but you guys can use whatever you want. So once I've done that, I then fill in color. So I'm just gonna use like a hot pink. I'm just gonna paste it onto a random layer and then go to the crop tool up here. And I'm gonna hold shift and alt and just pull it up. And then go back to this pink rectangle. 
and just to ensure that the aspect ratio doesn't get like corrupted at all I'm going to pull that up and it should fit into the all four corners perfectly um, and that's just a good way of sort of making sure that you haven't gone off in the wrong direction at all and then I'm going to start off with a dark background layer and I'm going to use the Allier logo that I used last time so just this it's all on one layer pull it across into this window I'm going to make it very large move it across to the side a little bit like it was last time and then I'm going to drop the opacity right down and I'm going to use a slight layer mode so I'm going to go for overlay now you can't see anything at the moment but we're going to make the color a dark navy instead of a dark black make sure this is the very bottom layer and press paste nowhere near dark enough something like that I'm going to lift that up slightly just to get the contrast in a little bit more and then what we're going to do is between this layer and the background layer make one in between and I'm going to tool pick this background color and just make it a little bit brighter we're then going to go over to the gradient layer which is in with the paint bucket if you can't see it just go to the paint bucket and then hold right click then select the one you want and I'm just going to choose this one which goes from your primary color to transparent now you're going to want to find the center so to do this uh, you want to press ctrl r to get your rulers up at the top and the bottom and just pull it down now if you're on an empty layer then it will snap when it's perfectly in the middle if you're on a layer with like shapes and stuff then it will try and connect to the shape so make sure you're on a completely empty layer and as you pull it you should feel a slight tug when you get to the middle it goes white as well and from there I'm going to go back to the gradient layer and just pull pull down and let go so that just sort of lights it up a little bit do it twice and I'm then going to make that lighter and move it across a little bit just like that it's nothing fancy and then after doing that I'm going to lower the the opacity of that down once again and I'm then going to make a layer over the top make it a bit darker and I'm going to change it to purple because the logo the first logo we're going to be making is going to be purple maybe a bit of a purple hot pink and yeah that seemed quite complex I hope I didn't lose you there you can go back through it but it's like the, the actual steps and the process is very simple it's just there are quite a few little bits to do now I'm going to merge all that together because that's not important I'm just going to leave that there I'm going to put a black layer underneath it so that if I feel like it's too distracting I can just lower the opacity until it slowly disappears uh, and yeah now we're going to get started so the first thing that I want to do is I want to pull across the sketch so like I mentioned this is the one here that I like also I hope I don't go too quiet I have to be looking towards my microphone like the second I look away or start looking at my drawing tablet or whatever I end up realizing that my microphone volume drops right down so sorry about that so you make sure you're on the right layer I'm using this marquee selection tool right near the top and then I'm just going to press ctrl C and ctrl V over here now it's going to lose its quality because I just took a picture of my drawing my drawing pad on my phone so the quality is not great but that doesn't matter because we're just using this as a rough guide I'm going to lower the opacity the transparency basically and I'm going to make it a little bit wider because I prefer the way that looks so the first thing that I'm going to cover is how to make the white outline that Allier has it would be a good idea to get an Allier logo up so let's use this one once again can copy and paste get rid of all the background on that and just pop that up in the top so you see this like white and grey circle that wraps around the side of the logo that's what we're going to be doing first very simple step so the first thing that you're going to want to do is make a white circle so we're going to make sure we're going from the middle and I'm holding shift and alt so the shift just means that your circle doesn't go like that it doesn't lose its shape say it stays as a perfect circle and alt means that it goes from the middle as opposed to like coming out in this direction so shift and alt and I'm going to get it to roughly the right size I'm then going to rasterize it straight away and I'm going to duplicate it so I've got two layers now the highest layer blending options color overlay I'm going to make it black I'm going to rasterize that as well and then I'm going to do the same control T to get the transform controls up I'm going to hide this grid if I don't need it 
Um, well, actually, once we've transformed it, I'll hide it. And then Shift and Alt again, and I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. Like that. I'm then going to use the, the magic wand to select all of this black shape. And then go to the white layer that's underneath. So I'm, I've selected the black bit, and I've gone to the white layer underneath, and I'm just pressing delete. Now what that's going to do is it's taken the shape of this black circle, and it's cut it out of the white layer. Now I'm going to keep this black circle, and I'm going to make it a little bit larger. And drop the opacity down. So now you can see we've got this half white, half grey. And you want to fiddle around with that until it's central. Now there is ways of making sure it's central you could measure from this side to this side also I don't know whether you can see like when I'm saying things like that I might try and like modify my mouse slightly or set it up so that it, it glows or whatever but um, yeah I'll make sure like I zoom in quite a lot when I'm explaining things so you could measure from this to this and work out exactly where the middle is but it's not that important especially for the sake of this tutorial so I'm just going to drop the opacity down like that now we will be cutting into this in the end, but we just want a simple shape to start off with. I'm going to merge the two, no I'm not going to merge the two together, but what I am going to do is I'm going to set a colour on it. So I've selected both of them, now I'm just going to click yellow. Just so that I sort of know what I'm looking at in my layers, I remember what colours they are instead of re renaming everything. And now we're going to start doing the actual shapes. So we're going to do the J. So I'm going to go on top. And here what I'm going to do, I've got to remember we're doing it in purple and I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to select, so I've got the colour picker up. And if you just click somewhere on the, the screen right now, it takes that colour for you. Didn't know if you guys knew that, but you can pick any colour. So I'm going to pick the Allier blue that's right up the top here. And then I'm going to pull it across to purple. So we've kept it in the same, same area, but we're just sliding the colour itself. I'm not explaining that right, I'm not, not great with colours, but yeah, we're going to push it towards purple. So go for sort of a hot pink, it will fade down into purple, because you can see with the Allier one, the top's very, it's like more cyan than it is blue, and then here it goes to like more of a navy. So we'll start here with like a hot pink as the, the colour, and yeah, merge those two together. Lower the opacity just so we can sort of see what we're doing here. And I'm going to pick from the sketch underneath, I'm just going to start drawing out the shape. So here I'm using the pen tool. You can just click in all the locations and once you've connected the final dot, you press make a selection. And it will fill that little area in for you. So we're going to click there, there and there. And then connect the final dot, right click, make a selection. And then using the bucket tool, I'm just going to drop the colour in. Now we're going to make a new layer and do the bit below. So we're going to go like that, 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 and we're actually going to make the point even though the sketch doesn't have it, it just means that we've kept our doors open in case we want to go back on the style. So connect the final dot, make a selection, and paste it in again. Now here we're going to start doing the, the effect, like where it slices through. So this is quite fat, like in terms of the, um, the thickness of the stroke, you might like play around with the shape slightly, you know, pull it around. You can change the proportion. What I'm doing here is I'm just in the normal transform bit, but I'm holding control. Just it allows you just to flex things around, uh, just to make sure that you're like happy with the shape. So I think I'm going to put it in that way a little bit more. I'm going to play around with that so that that lines up perfectly with the bit above. What I'm saying there is this bit here almost locks on perfectly. It's not. It's not like at an angle like that. And I'm going to push that back a little bit. And I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. There we go. I'm happy with that. And now, the way this bit here comes up at an angle, but this bit goes at a different angle, that's the kind of thing you need to think about when making the logo. So, don't know whether it's essential. You could probably get away with it. But for my sake, I'd like to clean that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rectangle and I'm going to rotate it till it's the same angle as this one here. How you can tell is just by going next to it and seeing this line, it's sort of the width of it stays the same throughout. 
and I'm gonna pull that and put that here so you can see that it doesn't work the same here because this is at a completely different angle and I'm just gonna put it like that and now I can see where I need to cut because it's poking up there and there so I'm gonna go onto this layer click there click there and just delete everything that's around the outside like that you can now get rid of this rectangle and now that should be lined up sorry if you can hear that please go around the background there you go still lined up I'm gonna pop it there and yeah now we're gonna do this drop down bit where this bit is light and this bit is dark so I'm gonna select the under shadow and I'm gonna move that towards purple And we're going to select the middle up here and the middle up there. So I am rushing this. Like with you guys, you're going to want to measure that out and make sure it is perfect. For me, that doesn't matter as much. And now for this bit, what you want to do is you want to make sure you're above the layer that you're working with. So we're working with this layer. So you want to go one layer above, then paste it on. i make that a little bit darker. And now you're probably thinking that looks very messy. Like it's just like sort of sliding over the top. But that's alright because now we're going to right click on that layer and create a clipping mask and that just locks it into place meaning that it can't go outside of the layer underneath. So there we've got that bit and we're going to do the exact same thing but down here on this one. So we're going to make a layer above, turn it into a clipping mask, we're going to go from here. Actually, I think probably what the best bit to do there is to work out what this line here is. So make a, a thin rectangle again and rotate it. So we're going to have it going from there to there. Oops, that's not weird there. So there you go, that gives you a rough idea. Rasterize that. Lower the opacity on that. I'm going to make another clipping mask layer. I'm going to take this same shade of purple and go down to around there and then pull it down to that point there. So as I keep saying, I do advise you take more time than I'm taking on this. But yeah, we're going to plop that in there. I can now get rid of this line. And we're going to go the opposite now. So we're going from the point up here, but we're going here instead and up so it's the opposite bit that's gone darker and go like that it's so like you can see over here where it's dark there and dark there light there and light there they sort of flip round I've done the same there so that's cool and now what we're gonna do is if I go into the tool picker you can see that the blue up here is very very light blue whereas the blue down there is a lot less saturated so we're gonna do that with the pinks I'm going to merge all these layers together. I'm going to select this, this, and look, that's done it for me because I guess there was a slight, yeah, there's a bit of a gap going on there. And now we're going to pick a nice hot pink. So I'm going to go up here, like closer towards the red, lift it right up like that. And then we're going to move it down towards purple again. So more towards the blue and slide it in this way a little bit. Then we're going to use the gradient tool to fade from the two colours that we've just selected. Put it, take it off the transparent one and make it so it's going from your two primary colours and just pull the pink. So we've got this fade going on now. I'm going to do the same but we're going to select the shadows. I'm going to go on a layer over the top just so things don't get too messy. And now we're going to pick the shadow. I'm going to think that the shadow is going to be a slightly cooler colour, so it's going to go towards the, the blue. Now we're in the proper purples. And I'm going to select a dark purple. And I'm going to go up to the hot pink and pull that down towards the blue like that. So we've got two very different purples, but they're both shadowed colours. I'm going to pull that down. So that looks like that. And I'm not happy with how that looks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to release the clipping mask. And then make a clipping mask on that which is just going to be a lot darker. So I'm going to pick a much darker navy purple like that. And I'm going to merge that together, turn it back into a clipping mask. And now you can just lower the opacity on it until you get to the, like, the shadow that you like. 
So I like it where it's starting to look a little bit like that. Ah, what I meant to do there is... Oh no, I'm doing it right, yeah. And then you could also play around with layer modes, because layer modes would often help you find a shadow perfectly. So you can flick through that. It might be quite cool actually how it's like a little bit more red. But you can decide, it's all obviously based on whatever colour it is that you're using. But I like the way it gets a bit more blue, so I'm going to use a 15% opacity. I'm now going to lift the background colour back up. Oh, wrong layer. This one. So now we're going to work on the bits that cut through. So what I mean by that is you can see here how the fact that this bit flicks up, it means that it's cut through the border. So we're going to be doing that, which is very simple. I'm going to make a, an extra layer of this in case we mess up. We can go back to the layer. What we're going to do is we're going to select a bit that's here. So what we want to do is we don't want to just like rub out and just hope that it's accurate like that. We want to actually take the angle of the flick and make sure that it runs parallel into the into the border. So how we're going to do that is we're going to select out here and then all the way out here so it runs a straight line all the way through. And then we'll do the same over this side and try and keep the thickness about the same. Over to here and back through like that. Now the good thing is once you've deleted it you can have a little look at what it looks like and decide whether it's how you want it or not. And this is the bit where you decide whether you want the logo to go underneath. So let's say you didn't want this bit to cut through but you wanted it to go underneath. So we'll keep we'll keep it how it is over there. Like that, not perfect but it will do. But maybe we want this bit, the logo, to go behind the border. So the way Ali A did it is he just cut into the shape like that to make it sort of wrap around like it's part of the circle. Oops, I did the selection wrong there. You want to go from this way to the outside because you're going to be you're going to be removing this part of the logo, and then you just press delete. So you can see it like goes underneath it a little bit. I don't think that looks as good, but in some letters that will be how you have to do it. In some letters that will look better than how I'm doing it at the moment. But I'm just going to do what we were talking about before, cut out that bit of the border. I hope you're able to follow guys, hope I'm not going too fast or too slow on certain parts. Now we're going to do the same up here, now that's a bit awkward the way this bit is positioned, I don't recommend doing anything like that, not getting too fancy with it, just had a voice crack there, oops. Um, but yeah, I don't recommend getting too fancy, it's such a simple logo, you don't want to mess about with little things like this. So. An easy way to fix that would be just to make the shape up there a bit bigger or just to take a shortcut and just slice it like that because at the end of the day it really doesn't matter that much so maybe maybe like that or you can see that the way he does it some of it the angles in it they're not like perfectly perfectly set so you could almost do almost do a bit of a curve or something but I'm going to go like that and then this side, we can go back to doing it how we do it before, with the smooth slice. Oops, wrong layer. Could have something like that. And the same up here, with the cut through. Something like that. Now this is a very rough logo, it looks quite messy, bits like that don't look great. But for the sake of the tutorial, it covers the style. If we go onto this logo, there's almost a bit of like a carpeted effect. I'm not going to be covering that because it's not actually in Allier's logo. But you can very much add textures to this simply by pasting images in over the top and then changing the layer mode. But that is basically how you do it. I'm now going to speed run me making this, but the C instead, just to give you another, another example of how it might be done. But I hope this voice tutorial helped. Hope to see you on my social medias and on my other videos, guys. Make sure you give this video a like. It helps me out greatly. And comments, I read every comment. So if you have any questions or if you'd like me to make you a logo like this, comment the letter and the colour down below. Regardless, hope this video helped. Hope you're excited for part two. Let me know if there's any other logos that you want me to cover how to make by other YouTubers or whatever. Regardless, hope you all have a great day. Hope you enjoy the rest of this video. And that is me out. Peace.